Good morning students, I am Ramani Valluri from our Social Science uh, Department. Today we are here to discuss the Social Science Assignment, Nationalism in India for Class 10th. Let us see the first question. Name the peasant communities of Gujarat and Uttar Pradesh who were active in civil disobedience movement. So here the answer is Patidars of Gujarat and Jats of Uttar Pradesh. As you all know that various communities have participated in civil disobedience movement with various goals. So here also the peasant communities have participated in civil disobedience movement. Their aim, main aim was a reduction of revenue. So who were the communities who were participated in a civil disobedience movement? The peasant communities, Patidars of Gujarat and the Jats of Uttar Pradesh. Let us see the second question. Why was the Congress reluctant to include workers' demands as parts of his uh, struggle? So there were uh, certain demands they have included uh, to uh, put forward to the British when they were struggling against the uh, British rule. So certain demands of the workers were not included by the Congress leaders. So why they did not include is the question. So the Congress feared that this would alienate industrialists and divide anti-imperial forces. Here the answer is because the, the industrial, uh, uh, rich industrialists were very close to the Congress. So they thought that if we include the demands of the workers, that it would may alienate industrialists and divide the anti-imperial forces. Hence they did not uh, include. So let us see the second, uh, third question. What was the course of Dandi March? What was the course of Dandi March means uh, how it was uh, carried out by Mahatma Gandhi. So the march was over 240 miles from Gandhiji's ashram in Shabarmati to the Gujarati coastal town of uh, Dandi. Fine, he has, uh, Gandhiji has started the uh, Dandi March uh, from Shabarmati ashram to Dandi, 240 miles. 10 miles per day, 24 days, they have uh, done this uh, march, fine, with his uh, staunch followers, 78 uh, staunch followers. So you can write the march was over 240 miles from Gandhiji's ashram in Sabarmati to the Gujarat coastal co town of uh, Dandi. Let us see the fourth question, who was Abdul Ghaffar Khan? Abdul Ghaffar Khan was also one of the uh, freedom struggle a movement leader who was very close to Mahatma Gandhi. So you can write, uh, he was a devout disciple of Mahatma Gandhi, led the civil disobedience movement in uh, Peshwar. Now Peshwar is in uh, Pakistan. So this uh, uh, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, who was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi, he also led a civil disobedience movement, actively participated in Peshwar. So what was the main motive of SALT march? So SALT march, when Mahatma Gandhi started SALT march, why did he start the, um, you know, SALT march? What was the main aim? So mainly Mahatma Gandhi started SALT march to break the SALT law. Fine, let us see the next question. Which incidents marked the beginning of civil disobedience movement? On 6th April, Mahatma Gandhi ceremonially violated the SALT Act, manufacturing salt by boiling sea water. This incident marked the beginning of the civil disobedience movement. As we have already uh, learnt this civil disobedience movement, how it was started. Fine. So uh, there were 11 demands uh, were there uh, which uh, Mahatma Gandhi put forward to Lord Irwin. In this, one of the demand was also to abolish salt law because salt was a common thing and uh, which is very, very important, which is used by the poor and the rich alike. So when uh, tax was imposed on that, everybody opposed that. Hence uh, Mahatma and it was a monopoly, salt manufacturing was monopolized by the British colonial government. So uh, Mahatma Gandhi started civil disobedience movement by manufacturing the salt from the sea water, from boiling the sea water. So these incidents mark the beginning of the civil disobedience movement you can write. So on 6th April, Mahatma Gandhi ceremonially violated the SALT Act, manufacturing salt by boiling sea water. This incident marked the beginning of a civil disobedience movement. 
So next question is when was Gandhi Irwin Pact signed? So when was Gandhi Irwin Pact signed? On 5th March 1931. We have discussed this already in the class, right? So Gandhi Irwin Pact because when the civil disobedience movement was going on and uh, you know there were uh, people were protesting against the British rule, fine. So there was a reduction of uh, revenue, they were demanding reduction of uh, revenue and they boycotted uh, foreign cloth, liquor shops were picketed and uh, you know uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, movement was going on. So British government has repressed uh, the freedom struggle movement with uh, uh, which turned into violent uh, act. So Mahatma Gandhi thought that this is not the way civil disobedience movement to be carried out. So he called off civil disobedience movement and he signed a pact with uh, Lord Irwin where he was uh, uh, consented to attend the round table conference. So on 5th March 1931, he has signed a pact with Lord Irwin. So this is known as Gandhi Irwin pact. Fine. Next question was why the rich peasants became enthusiastic supporters of a civil disobedience movement. For them the fight for Swaraj was a struggle against a high revenues. Rich peasants because rich peasants they used to grow commercial crops. They were earning more money fine but when uh, they had to pay high revenue to the government when there was a crop failure when they had to pay high revenue to the British colonial government uh, so they demanded reduction in uh, revenue so for them the fight for Swaraj was a struggle against uh, high revenues fine so let's see the next question the Congress was unwilling to support no rent campaigns during civil disobedience movement give reason so here also the Congress did not uh, support a no rent campaign which was taken up by the peasants because it did not want to raise issue that might upset the rich peasants and the landlords. Here landless uh, laborers were demanding no rent campaigns because they had to pay rent uh, to rich peasants. So rich peasants they did not want to upset the rich peasants, the Congress leaders. So hence, they did not uh, include the demand of the landless laborers. So, Congress was unwilling to support no rent, uh, rent campaigns during civil disobedience movement because it did not want to raise issue that might upset the rich peasants and the landlords. Let us see the next question. Name any two organizations which were formed by the business class to organize their uh, business interests. So what was see here uh, in during civil disobedience movement as we have seen uh, each and every group was uh, fighting. So here also the business organizations uh, were participated in the civil disobedience movement because they wanted to protect their uh, uh, business interests against the colonial rule which was affecting their uh, uh, Indian economy. So they participated. So what did they do? They formulated uh, or business interest to support to they formulated two organizations what were the two organizations they formulated Indian Industrial and Commercial Congress and Federation of the Indian Chamber of uh, Commerce and uh, Industries in 1927 they formulated name any two industries who actively participated in the civil disobedience movement so these are the people who formulated these organizations who were those uh, uh, active business uh, uh, industrialists who participated in civil disobedience movement you can uh, write the names of uh, Purushottam Das, Thakur Das and GD Birla. So with this we are completing this assignment and thank you so much all of you.